I don't say this with any sort of arrogance, but I've not experienced anxiety or depression firsthand. It was something I was concerned about though after giving birth to Levi, when my hormones were all over the place. It was just that really, the hormones being all over the place. After a couple of weeks, I was no longer acting out of the ordinary and I thought I was out of the woods and managed to escape the greatly spoken about postpartum depression and anxiety. Oh, how naive I was back then. Since I was perfectly alright emotionally, despite insufficient sleep, what hit me when I started weaning Levi was a whole new world to me. I've only ever heard about postpartum depression and anxiety, never once about post weaning depression and anxiety. Of course, until I started searching online to figure out what was wrong with me. This video is just to share my experience with you and how I felt and what happened or what helped me to raise some awareness and post weaning depression and anxiety. I had hoped to be able to breastfeed for at least six months. When six months hit, I wasn't willing to stop because I didn't want to deal with carrying bottles and formula if we were traveling. My supply was still good and to top it all off, I absolutely loved the idea of being able to nurture Levi to grow up, especially when he gained so much weight after our rocky start and incorrect information from midwives. Breastfeeding was the only way I bonded with Levi after he was born and that was something sentimental to me. Don't get me wrong, while there are so many ways you can bond with your newborn, this was the only one that worked for me. While I decided to continue breastfeeding after 6 months, I did plan to stop when I went back to work. I didn't want to deal with expressing while at work and providing express milk for Levi when he was at nursery, so 12 months was the new final goal. But when Levi turned 1 in April, I had absolutely no plans on how to stop or when to stop. I just continued feeding the fixed number of times a day that I normally did between his solids. We were on a very steady routine and Levi thrived by it. So I never fed on demand. In fact, Levi fed both his solids and breast milks on routine. When he was 13 months in May, we decided that it was time to stop his feed since my work start date and nursery date was fast approaching. I replaced each feed with cow's milk, starting from the night feed. Levi wasn't too fond of cow's milk initially, but he never really came to me for breast milk because he isn't used to feeding on demand. The very first time when I offered him cow's milk in a 360 munchkin cup, he looked at me all confused but didn't protest. He's usually quite a content child. I went from 4 feeds a day to none in 2 weeks flat and he got used to cow's milk in about 1 week. The 30th of May was my absolutely last day of breastfeeding and the first two weeks of June was a trial period for all three of us in the house with room changes. It was in this transition period that we decided to move Levi out of our bedroom to his own room. He always slept independently in his own cot while he was in our room, but he always knew we were right there next to him. I thought he would struggle when we first moved him, but it was me who struggled. The first day, I stayed up crying for a couple of hours and decided to sleep in the day bed in his room. He had absolutely no clue I was there that night because he slept so well. The next couple of days, I slept very poorly in my own bed as I laid in my bed looking at the monitor thinking he might wake up, but he never did. If you're wondering why on earth did I ever decide to move him to his own room if I was so worried and upset about it, it was all because I wanted to prepare him for nursery. I won't be there while he's napping and I won't be there to get him if he woke up. He would need to learn to sleep on his own and he would need to know that he would be okay on his own. Eventually, I got around to the idea that he was okay, that we would hear him anyways if he were to wake up in between. He somehow always knew we were watching him through the monitor. He would stare straight at the camera in the room and call out to us if he needed us.
I was in a pretty bad state in my mind the whole month of June until I eventually figured out what was happening. The days leading up to mid-June, when it was Levi's first trial day in nursery, was filled with anxiety. Lakshman even took the day off to accompany me when I went to drop Levi off. Despite the nursery practicing safe COVID rules where only one parent could be in with the child. Under normal circumstances, having Lakshman waiting in the car for me during any similar events is unheard of. But on that particular day, I agreed. I would normally handle it on my own, but this time I wanted him to be there. I was allowed to be inside for half an hour while he was supposedly mingling with the other kids. He did leave my side for a bit, but then came running back to me. After all the formalities and forms were filled, it was time for me to leave. I knew he was going to cry, but I cried more than him. Lakshman and I sat in the closest car stop filling up more forms. We only had about 30 minutes, but that felt like 3 hours. I spent all 30 minutes crying. His hours in the nursery for the next 3 days increased every day. Day 2 was 2 hours, day 3 3 hours with lunch there and day 4 was 4 hours including a nap. Lakshman didn't stay back for those. I dropped Levi off at the nursery and went out to get some extra clothes and shoes for him to distract myself, but it didn't quite help. I couldn't shake off his crying face asking for me when I dropped him off. It got so bad that I was having anxiety and panic attacks before we left home for nursery. I had absolutely no concerns about safety or cleanliness or anything of that sort with the nursery. They were really good and well trained that he would actually stop crying within 10 minutes of me leaving, but I just couldn't bear to leave him while he was crying. And this was the absolute first time I've ever left him without Lakshman or me. We've not even left him with our own family. Every single day for that first week, I doubted my choices and plans. I thought I should just stay at home and take care of him. I started being hard on myself. I lost my appetite quite badly, that I lost 3 kgs in less than one week. The worst was when my mood digressed severely. I had no desire to do anything, be it making a video, reading, writing or even shopping. I had no growth, no reading, no journaling, no YouTube videos, absolutely nothing drastically reduced talking or sharing with anyone. I had somewhat lost my appetite for life and had hardly much joy in anything. There were a lot of emotions flaring up and throwing words all over the places. I just didn't want to do anything and I ended up binge watching some random stuff on YouTube or TV. I spent countless nights crying through the night, countless days feeling lost and at despair. I didn't even know what to do and how to overcome this. By the second week, I knew this was more than just not feeling motivated or lethargic. By the third week of June, Lakshman noticed something was very wrong and spoke to me. At first I couldn't open up to him, but eventually when I did, it really felt like a weight was lifted off my chest. Here's what I found out about post-weaning anxiety and what helped me. Post-weaning anxiety is caused by the hormonal fluctuations that occurs when you stop breastfeeding. Your body had already altered so much since carrying a child, childbirth, and breastfeeding. So when you stop something that you've been doing for a long time, the body needs some time to adjust and so does the mind to be honest. It can normally take anywhere between 4 to 6 weeks for your body and hormones to recalibrate, sometimes even up to 3 months or more. It really is dependent on individuals and personal circumstances that surrounds. What worried me was the amount of distress and anxiety I had at each drop-off. I started googling and discovered post-winning anxiety. The more I read about it, the more it made sense. I knew I wanted to stop breastfeeding when Levi was one, but I didn't really prepare myself for it. So when I drastically decided that I had to stop before work and nursery, it came as a shock to me 
and my body and mind didn't know how to cope with it. And it definitely the hormonal imbalances too. The entire breastfeeding journey is an emotional roller coaster, right? I felt very lost and as if I didn't have any purpose once I stopped breastfeeding Levi because this was the only way I bonded with him in the beginning. So when our journey stopped, I felt as if I wasn't going to serve any more purpose for him as a mother. I know that's not true, but that's one of the things that made me upset in the beginning. I even considered resuming breastfeeding after two weeks of stopping, but I knew it was the right way forward for both of us. Also, because multiple things happened so quickly within a span of two weeks, I felt overwhelmed by the end of the month. I loved being able to return to work, and I especially loved having the freedom of time when I didn't have to constantly calculate how much time I had left to complete a task before I had to nurse Levi again. More than this, I was especially proud of Levi for learning so much and really becoming his own person in the nursery within two weeks of being there, despite him being sad when I dropped him off. And yet, my heart and mind couldn't take it, and I felt overwhelmed most of the time that I just didn't want to do everything I once loved doing. I took a step back from everything and stripped it right back to the basics. Talking it out to Lakshman definitely made a difference and made it more real rather than something that was just in my own head. I have read that talking to supportive family or friends or even breastfeeding support group does help. Next, I intentionally took some time off from doing anything and wanted to go back to hobbies that I really enjoyed doing, something that kept my mind occupied but not demanding. I started a new thousand piece jigsaw puzzle. This was the only thing I wanted for my birthday in June this year. I didn't care about going on a holiday or shopping or anything else this year. It took me a couple of weeks to finish it because I didn't set a deadline, but it made a whole world of a difference. I was a completely different person when I was working on my jigsaw puzzles at night or during Levi's afternoon naps. Another thing that really helped me was exercising. It's something that we normally dislike doing, but it's the one thing that gets your body working like it always should. I knew how good working out is for my body and mind, so I signed up at the gym once again. Going to the gym after almost two year break during the pandemic and having a baby seemed daunting, especially when I had to go on my own. But I did it anyway because I was so desperate to get back to my normal self and beat the hormonal imbalances before it overwhelmed me again. It surely made a huge dent in our finances, but I'm a whole new person when I go to the gym and it's worth it. The whole journey was like a slow burner, both post weaning anxiety and getting out of it. I cannot really say how long it took me to get back to my normal self, but it happened around about the time I completed my jigsaw puzzle. Till date, the gym still helps me when I have off days. I make it a point to go to the gym regardless of how much time I have for something else.
Feeling down and demotivated can be part and parcel of life, but that doesn't need to keep you down all the time. Be sure to speak with someone you trust, whom you know will be able to support you and make a plan to help yourself. At the end of the day, being true to yourself and taking care of yourself is all that matters. I really hope this video is beneficial to you. Share it with someone whom you think might need to hear this.